Hi, Dan Tokar here at the Willow Forge in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Uh, today, as part of the Blacksmith's Dictionary, I'm going to show you a pipe swage. This is a guillotine type pipe swage. This is one I made myself eons ago. Uh, it's basically uh, two pieces of leaf spring that have been forged so that there are radiuses, two different sized radiuses. That's all together. You have a little radius and a big radius. Okay, so I'm now going to have to put the filter on the camera. All right, back again. What I have here is a piece of Schedule 40 one inch black pipe. I'm going to put it in the fire. And what we're going to do is neck down a section of this pipe and forge a taper in the neck down section. Now, you'd say, well, why in the world would you want to do something like that? All sorts of useful things you can do with a neck down piece of pipe. Uh, one of my favorite things is, is to make socketed chisels or uh, even spears because you could forge well a uh, hang into the tapered uh, piece of pipe and have a nice uh, welded socket without having to weld the socket. It's kind of cheating, but uh, they do make marvelous sockets for uh, large woodworking chisels. Uh, we're not going to get that far today. All we're going to do today is forge a taper uh, by starting with a neck in these pipe. I'm going to use my second best hammer for that. If I was smarter, I would start with a warm piece pipe, but nobody ever accused me of being that much smarter. A lot of our time is just heating this up. I'm trying to remember where I learned a lot of this stuff. It's been decades. I think it was Richard Sexton, the blacksmith that invented an awful lot of the, uh, the tooling people use these days for doing things with pipe. He did a lot of uh, interesting things with tubing, pipe. Now I'm spinning the pipe in the fire Try and get it even because you don't want to have one part of the pipe, one side of the pipe, hotter than the other. With a little hole in the fire to take a look at the pipe. That's nice and hot. All right, so I pull that out, I open up the guillotine, put that down, my hammer on it, and rotate. At the same time, if I angle it and put it through the guillotine at the diagonal, it will make a longer radius to the neck. And as you neck it, it's also upsetting wall thickness so the pipe is actually getting thicker in the neck. You see I still have some heat but I have put a nice neck. You can also use this to do things like make candle cups. I've gone to the smaller Radius, which helps me take it down even further. 
and this is still one meat. So if you're making a candle sconce or something, you might want to make a candle holder with a piece of pipe. And that's actually pretty cleanly done. I'm going to put it back in the fire. I'm going to take my swage out. Because now that I have a neck, I can actually forge the pipe into a long taper. Again, as if I was making a socket for something like a wood chisel. not to hit the pipe too hard because you can collapse it. What you're really doing is upsetting it when you're forging. The pipe is hollow and you can collapse it. It's one reason when you use the pipe swage is that you're focusing the flows but you're also doing fairly medium strength blows rapidly rather than very hard blows like you might if you were trying to forge a solid piece. You don't want to squash the pipe. You're persuading the pipe. Yeah, that's nice and hot. I'll even take some of the scale off. And of course, my hammer hit the floor. Now, I'm angling the pipe and angling the hammer, and you'll see I'm not hitting it very hard. I am hitting it moderately hard and continuing to rotate the pipe. Like making a taper on a solid bar, control is important. So I've made that kind of a taper. I'm going to now extend the taper a little more gradual further back. All right. I'll heat it up again. But you can see the way the taper is going. So if you were making a socket for a really big chisel, you might want that taper to be four or five inches long. Be a respectable socket for something like a timber framer mortising chisel. A big heavy socket. Or make a really long, delicate socket for something like a slick for uh, working on ships, canoes, or paring down timber framing joints. Of course, you can use the same sort of thing uh, for decorative purposes. If you were going to make chandeliers, you could make candle cups and do all sorts of tapers in the tubing or pipe. Uh, give yourself interesting design possibilities. You can even turn out little hollow balls doing it this way if you want. Of course, you can just go out and buy little hollow balls, but that's no fun. And again, in order to help make sure that this comes out in nice even taper, you do have to rotate the pipe every now and then. If you're using a coal fire, Imagine you guys with gas forges don't have to worry too much about that. The tubing and pipe doesn't spread the heat as easily, and it's possible to have hot spots. 
So that's nice and hot. Take the scale off. I'm angling it at a slightly shallower angle now. And working the taper further back. See, that's a tapered piece of pipe. Okay, that's enough for now. We might have a later uh, video about actually forge welding a uh, chisel into that kind of a socket where we cut that off. You'd still have that as some sort of a tapered cup too because you could go back and forge a taper on that end. But that's pretty much it for today. Bye.